you understand what is a value proposition. You also understand the criticality of having effective value propositions and you want to build them for your business, but you don't really know where to begin. So in this session, we are going to give you a three steps, very simple methodology to develop effective B2B value propositions. All that and more coming up right after this. Let's look at how to create a value proposition. Uh, I've summarized this process into three simple steps. Step one, research. Step two, analysis. And finally, uh, finalize the value proposition and roll it out. So let's look at research first, right? There are four key areas to research, uh, in my opinion. First one is internally. Internally, ask your main stakeholders questions along the lines of what do you think is your unique selling proposition or USP? Why do customers buy from us? What unique value are we bringing to our customers? Or, you know, whatever other questions um, are, could be relevant to your business. So ask those kind of questions. It will help you bring the value out um, from, from that kind of questioning. Do the same with your customers as well and remember to include both your good customers as well as your bad customers. You never know what value you could uncover in that process. Next look into your capabilities that your company has and, and to do that there are three areas that you need to look into. Number one, look at the skills that are distributed across your company in various departments because these skills are, are helping you to deliver value to your prospects. You could here take the help of your talent managers or your department heads, team managers and, and the likes depending on how you are organized. Next, look at the case studies. Look at the work, the projects you have delivered for your customers and look at the results that you have got from there. See what value you have added to your customers. And that is, a, is, is factual proof of what you have, uh, what value you have contributed to your customers. Uh, and then look at the products and services as well. Look at the features and functionalities that, that are packaged in these uh, products and features and see what value is coming out of each of them. The fourth area of uh, research is, um, is competition. So the first three sources of input are all about your business and your product or service. Your research will be incomplete if you do not understand the sea of competitors around you. You need to understand what are their business propositions, how are they trying to get the attention of your customer, are they honestly better than you. To leverage tools like Buzzsumo, What Runs Where, Wayback Machine, these things will give you factual information around the messaging, um, that your com competitors are putting out there to your prospects, to your customers. And also, um, you know, there are various other uh, techniques that you can use to gather competitive intelligence. These are the four areas that you need to uh, look into, do research. Um, and this input is going to be very, very valuable in your value proposition development exercise. Step two, this is going to be about analysis. Now, look, look for patterns and, these, and strong points emerging from the data that you have collected. I use a technique called uh, building messaging pyramids. So wh where I'm basically uh, linking the values suggested by all these four areas of research that we have just completed. There will be a few that will come out a lot stronger than the others. Pick these strong ones and proceed to the next stage. In the final step, um, take the strong values that you have just identified and articulate them in the form of value propositions. Maybe use the uh, template that Joe Wilson gave us for each of your persona, each of your target sector and each of your target business function. Develop technical ones for the technical audience, commercial ones for your investors or commercial buyers, journalistic uh, ones for the media and so on. 
work with an executive sponsor that's very very important right um, having the backing of an executive sponsor because what you are developing is going to be the cornerstone of your entire uh, business and you need to get buy-in from the topmost um, executives the decision makers in your company so having an executive sponsor will help you in that process also test your output with the decision makers individually before you go into that boardroom or before you go into a meeting with the decision makers because if you do not test it then you will just fa face a wall of criticism whereas if you have tested your findings and your pro proposal then you would have fine-tuned it and your your um, process of getting a buy-in from the decision makers is going to be a lot uh, easier uh, when you get into that boardroom and eventually uh, you will come up with the value propositions uh, that will be agreed upon by the uh, by the decision makers and when you do it's time now to to do the launch of these value propositions so as part of that before you go external educate internally especially all your customer facing staff they might need help in adopting these in, in their sales proposals, for example. Your marketing folks might need help in uh, implementing the value proposition in the applications for awards uh, or in press releases or even their advertisements. So help them out. It's the initial stages. They, they will get used to it over time. And finally, then you're ready to take it to the wider market externally for whom you have actually built these value propositions run some dedicated awareness campaigns for example and spread the message let them know what value you are selling because that is what you're all about value with that you'd have completed the value proposition development exercise